influencer marketing started, it was that brands are powerful and have money and prestige in our society. And influencers were little baby things that made no money when it first started, right? And like, you know, you could get paid a hundred bucks a post or 300 bucks a post. And so the power dynamic was very much brand convinces someone with a following to endorse their product, even if they don't really like it that much and they get paid for it. And what's happened is that the following of influencers have gotten smart to this. And just like a TV ad where you look away when the ads come on, when you see an influencer endorsing a product, you look away now. In the very beginning of influencer marketing, people were like, oh my gosh, Ella is so cool. Like mm -hmm. she thinks this dress is cool. I should probably get it. And then they realized that you were just getting paid and they stopped trusting you. So the only way influencer marketing works is if the brand of the influencer actually supersedes the brand of the brand. So if you, uh, you know, if, if a woman were a fashionista, say, and she has 100,000 followers and her followers look to her for fashion advice, if the influencer's brand is more important than the brand's brand, and the influencer only works with brands that she actually wants to endorse, then her page still is endorsements of products that she has curated. So as the internet has become very large, Ella, it went from being a helpful tool to actually being overwhelming. The internet is too big. And so a curation layer is forming, sometimes using algorithms where we're shown news articles or ads or content of all kinds that Facebook or Instagram or Google or Amazon think that we'll find compelling. It narrows down the scope of the massiveness of the internet. And influencers are no exception to that. Like they narrow it down. Again, if I wanted to buy protein powder, there are 4,000 to choose from. It's a lot easier if there's a curation layer, whether it's an algorithm on Amazon or whether it's an influencer I trust saying, this is the one, James. Like you don't need to pay attention to the other 3,999. This is the one for you. So if influencers can hold their ground and be curation, be an editorial layer and uphold their in editorial integrity, then it works. But if they're just shills for brands, the minute they sell out and endorse something just to make a buck is the minute it completely falls apart.